Hey guys, it's Mr. Cornell here trying to make a simple tutorial video for you guys. Uh, I'm the creator and founder of 1% LOL, by the way. Uh, so I just kind of thought this was an important thing to do. Because if, you know, someone doesn't intuitively understand what a Proto Frontier is, or just doesn't feel like they fully understand the concept and want to make sure they get it, while not wanting to read paragraphs of text in the guide section of the website, then, you know, a three to four minute video like this might not be a bad idea for you. It's, it might be a good option. So before I kind of uh, go into the thick of it and start talking about uh, Proto Frontiers, let's talk about what the dominated area is. The dominated area is shown in the red bubble here. Uh, it'll always uh, consist of the suboptimal data points uh, given the two variables being compared, which in this case are average deaths and average kills. Uh, they're always going to be smaller in size, the suboptimal data points, when compared to the bigger in size Proto Frontier data points, uh, just in terms of physical sheer size. Um, let's see, that's pretty much all, all that you really need to know about this, the suboptimal uh, dominated, dominated area. Uh, on the contrary, there's the, there's the Proto Frontier. This is the optimal path. This is uh, shown in blue in this second image below. What is important about the, probably the most important question, now that I think about it, is probably what makes up the optimal path. Uh, and you know, that's going to depend on your variables. Uh, in, in terms of deaths, obviously you want to minimize the n number of deaths you get in League of Legends. That's pretty obvious. And, you know, in most games of League of Legends also, on a similar note, you want to you wanna maximize the number of kills you get. So you're, you're, you're looking to minimize the number of deaths and maximize the number of kills, just generally speaking. And so that's kind of what makes up your optimal path in, in this case. Uh, so that's that's just for this, uh, this one scenario. And... At each end of the Proto Frontier are extremes. And this extreme down here is obviously the extreme where it's the minimum number of deaths. And that, that champion right now that lies along the Proto Frontier is Janna. She just doesn't die at all. Her, she just doesn't have damage built into her kit. She isn't supposed to be the main carry by any means. She does a great job at supporting her team from the back lines, with the exception of, you know, flash ulting for like a big play every once in a while. But she's she's not making Getting, going out there and making those really risky plays generally. Thus, she fits perfectly right now in this meta, this Arden Sensor meta, to, to play from the back and, and pretty much never die. So she has that advantage going for her. We're on the, whereas on the other end of this uh, Proto Frontier is Katarina. She's at the top. Uh, she is getting tons of kills and trying to snowball her lead. And, you know, what comes with the, at the expense of getting those all those kills? You, you're going to take a lot of risk. You're going to dive in. You're going to try and make the, that play. And you're going to die more often, just just inherently. Uh, that's just the trade-off that you have to accept. And as a result, everything in between these two extremes is the trade-off region. So, you know, like in between there, you're going to have a champion that, you know, they, they're not dying as much as Katarina, but they're definitely dying more than Janna. But they're also going to be getting more kills than Janna. So, you know, th there's definitely a, a trade-off in there. So that's kind of all I just wanted to talk about in terms of what a Proto Frontier is and the extremes and the kind of general trade-off that you'll see with every kind of relationship that's being shown on 1% LOL. It's also worth saying and noting that just because something isn't on the Proto Frontier doesn't mean it's not viable. Uh, you know, that's not always going to be true. Like, something might be very, very not good and it's going to be really bad and it might be really far, especially if it's really far uh, on the multi-level uh, Proto Frontier graph. If it's like le a really high level, then it shows that it's really far from the Proto Frontier because on the multi level graph, Proto Frontier is level 1. So if it's like level 10 or 20 or something, then it's it's probably, you know, pretty suboptimal, like extremely suboptimal. You should reevaluate playing that. But if it's, you know, level 2, level 4, level 5, level, you know, any of those levels near the Proto Frontier, you know, it's still viable. Uh, it's still pretty good. Uh, you know, it, it might not be as optimal as playing a champion that can achieve the same thing a little more easily, uh, which is what the Proto Frontier is trying to show. But if you have no experience on a champion on the Proto Frontier, you have a ton of experience on a, a champion that's on the level 2 of the multi-level Proto Frontier graph, then, you know, that's pretty close to the Proto Frontier, and you're probably going to be just fine doing that. So I just wanted to make a disclaimer there about that issue uh, before that maybe, you know, was, blows up into a, a big uh, 
hate hatred kind of thing and people just like accusing each other of of things let's just you know flush that out now and uh, that's really all I had to say for this video. If you, have, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Leave a comment below. Uh, reach out to me on by messaging me on social media. If I if you have any ideas about maybe something else that I should create a tutorial for that isn't intuitive to me, then uh, by all means, please uh, also comment or message me about that. And uh, thanks a bunch, guys, and have a great day. I appreciate it.